Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Deep Understanding of Research Papers. Today, in this tutorial, I will cover the paper Skip Thought Vectors. This paper is by some of the well known people in deep learning community Jamie Ryan Kiros from uh, University of Toronto. Right now, she is working in Google, Google Brain. Yukun Zhu, Razlan Salaknikov is from uh, University of Toronto again, but uh, right now he is teaching in CMU and is the director of uh, AI in Apple. Then Richard Zamel, he is a professor at University of Toronto. Antonio Toralba, very well known person in computer vision. Uh, Raquel Urtasan, uh, leading uh, uh, Uber's ATG in University of Toronto, working in Vector Institute. And Sanya Fidler is again University of Toronto. She is the director of NVIDIA AI. Now the tutorial is going to cover the overview of the paper. Then we'll uh, uh, see the introduction of skip thought vectors. Then we'll see what is skip thought vectors. Then at the end, we'll see uh, experiments and results. So the overview of the paper is like this. So basically, the frame, uh, the skip thought vector framework is designed for learning, uh, learning sentence embeddings using unsupervised learning algorithm. So the data uh, will be unsupervised data. It's not going to have any label or anything. The data is, uh, we'll see what is the data, but the data is just like, how uh, just like uh, a simple plain text and we'll see how to use that to train our skip thought uh, skip thought vector model and later we'll see uh, the importance of learning these uh, sentence embeddings so and uh, we can use those kind of embeddings for other tasks basically for classification or even for semantic uh, similarity measure so we'll see uh, uh, how we can use this sentence embeddings for the later for the other uh, problems these embeddings which are learned using unsupervised algorithm and data so basically uh, when we extract these sentence sentence embeddings or when we get these sent uh, skip thought vectors for every sentence these these vector captures the semantic uh, or syntactic properties or syntactic relationship of the words and if the semantic and syntactic representations or semantic and syntactic uh, properties are similar then those two vectors will be will fall into same uh, uh, vector space and we'll see uh, the we'll see how this uh, problem of vocabulary expansion can be handled then uh, at the end uh, they have used these vectors uh, these skip thought vectors to ta uh, to test it on eight different uh, tasks basically semantic relatedness and paraphrase detection image sentence ranking question type classification and four different benchmark on sentiment and subjective data sets so you'll see that uh, in the coming uh, coming slides so this is the overview of the paper basically the goal of the paper is to generate sentence vectors or vectors which represents the sentence and we want to capture the semantic representations for the sentences and we'll see how these vectors are useful for other tasks so skip thought we'll see uh, the introduction to skip thought basically uh, these skip thoughts are skip thought framework is designed to generate vectors uh, for every uh, sentence for, which is a natural language and these vectors should be uh, uh, should be similar if the sentence sentence is say two sentences are semantically similar and we'll use some encoder decoder concept here to learn these embeddings or to learn or to generate these skip thought vectors and basically how we do is it is uh, we try to generate given as middle sentence we will try to generate the previous sentence and the next sentence so that's how we'll design the framework uh, to minimize the minimize uh, or to min uh, to i mean we'll use that as an objective uh, basically looking at the main goal of the network is to given the middle sentence i want to reconstruct the previous sentence and the next sentence and we'll see how we do, how we do that using encoder decoder framework and uh, this encoder at the end after training will give us you'll, we can use it as a, a, a nice feature extractor and these features can be used for any <coughs> arbitrary task, tasks and and another thing is uh, if you have uh, since the system is tries to generating words uh, sometimes the there can be new words which can be added to the vocabulary and we will see how to handle it basically we will try to map the word to vex into some other uh, space uh, using some uh, model and uh, we can get representations of uh, our word to vex kind of representations for any new words which is not there in the vocabulary 
and uh, uh, as we know this is the goal of the paper is to generate vectors for every sentence and what is skip that now we'll see uh, what is skip that so basically skip thought is a encoder decoder framework so uh, skip thought vector is basically a vector you will generate after you pass your sentence through your encoder so the encoder is uh, is one uh, neural network which is basically a recurrent neural network which takes these uh, takes the middle sentence so middle sentence basically is a sequence of words and the goal of this framework is to generate a representation h here hi which we are going to feed it to your decoder uh, decoder one which is going to reconstruct the previous sentence and another decoder which is going to generate the uh, next sentence or a next uh, next sentence generate the next sentence so basically we, the input is going to the model is going to take a tuple which will have three uh, three sentences si minus one is the previous sentence and si is the middle sentence and si plus one is the next sentence so these are like three contiguous sentences and ith sentence uh, is going to be our encode uh, is going to be fed as an input to the encoder here and for example if you take this example i got back home i could see the cats cat on the steps this was strange so this was strange is the next sentence si plus one and i got back home is the previous sentence which is si minus one and middle sentence is i could see the cat uh, on, st on the steps so that is going to go as an input to the encoder and we try to de uh, decode these two sentences so we'll see how to how the encoder decoder framework works basically we are going to feed this words as input to the recurrent neural network and we try to generate every word conditioned on the previous word and which the conditioning also uh, uh, takes care of the last layers uh, representation which is hi hi from the encoder so you now we'll see what is encoder and decoder so basically encoder is as i said it's a recurrent neural network in this case they are using uh, gru units instead of lstm and uh, as you know uh, let's consider sentence isi which is a middle sentence which is going to go as an input to the uh, encoder which will have let's say n words and uh, these are the words which we can call like w1 wi uh, i2 w uh, wn so we have n different words and for every word as an input the recurrent neural network is going to generate a hidden state representation which is hit at the th uh, time step right and uh, these are the equation we'll use to compute the recurrent neural networks or the GRUs, GRU, the uh, gated recurrent units uh, in its uh, update state, hidden state, and uh, reset state, all those, right? So at the end, uh, end of the uh, recurrent neural network, after the encoder, we get the last layer representation, which is sorry, last time step representation, which is HIN. N is the last word. So that is going to be used as an input to uh, the decoder. Uh, during uh, generating the words for previous sentence and the next sentence <coughs> so how does the decoder look so decoder basically is a is a language model kind of an algorithm because we try to generate a word conditioned on previous words and the conditioning also includes the representation from the encoder so basically it's the same uh, recurrent neural network but uh, instead of instead of only uh, hi they have this uh, three matrices cz for uh, update date and cr for uh, reset kit and c for the hidden state for uh, as a bias and as we know uh, and we can think of hi plus one t as the hidden state representation of the decoder at time t and using the same uh, formula which is since it's also recurrent neural network we use the same formula as here and we compute the hidden state representation hi plus 1t which is for the hidden state representation of the next sentence at time step t now the question is how do we generate or how do we get the word uh, for example here we have the, we had this uh, equation sorry we had this network where i want to predict the word got given the previous word i and the hidden state representation hi so that you can obtain it uh, using this is hi plus 1 is the state representation of the decoder at time steps t for the i plus one state now we what we want to do is we want to predict what is the probability of the word at time t what is the probability of the word within our vocabulary uh, at time step t given all the previously generated words and the representation or uh, sentence representation obtained from uh, encoder of the skip dot model and they say this is proportional to ex, ex, ex power of uh, sorry uh, 
uh, exp of uh, v t plus 1 uh, v uh, uh, v uh, w i plus 1 t which is the which is the uh, vocabulary this is actually the vocabulary entry so vocabulary is capital v the vocabulary entry at time uh, or, uh, vocabulary word uh, entry for the word uh, w i plus 1 t and this we are going to multiply from multiply with the uh, uh, the representation obtained at time step t for the i plus one i plus one th or i plus one th, uh, sentence which is the next sentence so this is some, some something similar to uh, the the softmax but they are saying it's proportional so basically you want to know what is the probability of the current word given the previous words and the uh, skip thought vectors representation now the objective is simple objective is basically i want to uh, i want to maximize the probability of probability of the generating the current word given all the previous words uh, log probability and i want to sum over all the uh, all the uh, time steps t so if you remove log it becomes like product which is exactly similar to language modeling equation where we want to predict the current word given the previous word and this is for the i plus one sentence which is the next sentence and i want to do the same thing with the previous sentence i want to know what is the probability of the current word given all the previous words along with i want to feed condition along with i want to condition the hi and uh, i have two two probability uh, uh, equations and i want to sum both of them and i want to maximize this objective so that is about uh, skip thought vector skip thought model now uh, the model is trained using book corpus basically they have uh, they have scraped uh, book, uh, book corpus data set you can go look at it and that that will have some sort of novels for different genres and uh, they have used uh, for uh, for they, they have a model called uniscape which uses unidirectional encoder which is basically as a unidirectional uh, guru uh, with 2400 hidden dimension and they have a bi-scape model which is basically a bidirectional uh, group uh, just like bidirectional LSTM with the forward and backward uh, encoder so forward encoder again 1200 dimension backward encoder is 1200 dimension and uh, we can combine these two and make it uh, the final uh, I mean we have to concatenate the representations of both forward and backward and make it like 2400 and there is another model called combine skip basically it is a combination of both the uh, uniskip and by skip which is 2400 plus 2400 which is 4800 dimension and for the experiment they have used uh, 128 dimension milli batch and they have used atom optimizer for optimization and uh, we'll see now we'll see uh, the experiments the eight different tasks they have used uh, for evaluating this skip thought so basically once you train your skip thought model the encoder will be ready to generate uh, vectors or embeddings for every sentence now I have a lot of NLP problems in my hand and I want to know how these uh, skip thought vectors are going to be useful for my NLP task. So the first task is semantic relatedness. So basically semantic relatedness is about finding the similarity or sentence similarity between two sentences. So they have a data set called SICK, S-I-C-K and uh, given two sentences I want to know if these two sentences are similar or not. And the similarity score could be uh, between the 1 and 5. If the score is 1, that means the sentences are not at all similar. But if the score is 5, the sentences are highly similar, right? And the data set has this many training, uh, this, it has 4,500 training pairs, 500 development pairs, and 4,097 uh, testing pairs. And these are the results for this um, semantic relatedness task, where uh, you can see. Uh, there are uh, they have evaluated on different methods and you can see the state of the art which is like best model out of all this model is dependency, dependency tree LSTM but uh, if you see this uniskip, skip and combined skip model they are somewhat uh, working s almost similar to almost or somewhat almost close to the state of the art so for example uh, they are measuring the co correlation and Pearson correlation coefficient and uh, mean square error and uh, you can see the results are almost almost like very close to uh, the dependency tree LSTMs. So this is one uh, problem they want to solve basically uh, so basically if I give you two sentences uh, we are going to extract skip thought vector for both the sentences and we uh, find out the score the score is basically a dot product of these two vectors 
along with they combine uh, dot product along with the difference between the vectors also so you can read the paper in detail if you want to see okay how what is the actual actual uh, number which is between 0 and 1 so this is on, sorry 1 and 5 and uh, for the correlation for the measurement of the accuracy they have is this correlation coefficient and mean square error and uh, for the paraphrase detection this is the second task uh, in the paraphrase detection uh, they want to know uh, if uh, if uh, given two sentences uh, they want to predict whether they are paraphrases or not and the training data is 4000 sentences and the uh, test data is 1000 1725 sentences and uh, this is actually Microsoft uh, paraphrase corpus and as you can see uh, the model uh, the best model is uh, empty matrix and uh, using skip thought uh, skip thought with different variations like uniskip uh, by skip combine skip and combine skip along with the uh, feeds which is going to give you uh, almost uh, not, uh, not almost but uh, approximately similar to the state of the art uh, paraphrase detection model but uh, still is did not beat the state of the art but it's almost close okay uh, sorry i think the, there's a mistake on uh, uh, this this should be the classification uh, classification experiments so basically they have uh, five different classification uh, problems so they have movie uh, review sentiment customer review products customer product reviews as they have subjective objective classification and opinion polarity and question type classification so uh, so these are the five different classification problem they have and they have they have shown here that um, here again that uh, they have used this uh, end to end uh, skip thought sorry not end to end uh, skip thought model here and they have other algorithms which are some similar to I mean some are related to deep learning methods like BRNN, CNN, Adacent, those and uh, some Bayesian models also like Navebase, uh, SVM and they show that uh, for each task like for example MR is the movie review uh, model, uh, CR is a customer review product review pr uh, problem and like that and uh, you can see that Adacent is basically it's, uh, the state of the art for this for example movie review and you can see here that most of them most of them are uh, taken over by adjacent algorithm but uh, one of them is uh, one of them which is a ta uh, question type classification uses uh, uh, question type classification kind of beats the adjacent but in none of the classes none of the problem actually the uh, skip thought is not able to beat any of the uh, um, uh, not able to beat this adjacent algorithm but it is kind of almost similar as you can see it's 95 here 96 93 here it's kind of similar almost similar to the uh, classification problem so so that way uh, training these kind of uh, skip thought models uh, to extract the to extract the embeddings or sentence embeddings for uh, every sentence and using these uh, sentence embeddings to achieve some other task or to uh, to solve some other task is a very good uh, idea and so this paper again shows like these things like learning these uh, representations just and in unsupervised way using a lot of data a lot of like book corpus data and transferring that uh, or using those generated vectors for some other task is a very easy thing uh, instead of building an entire algorithm for a particular problem and uh, thank you so much for watching the video if you are not subscribed to my channel uh, please subscribe thank you